out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Mike Tattle of Vignan. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch, it's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile precision handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Barlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist. The only thing you can be sure of when you plan a fishing outing is that weather can change without notice, which can really throw you a curveball. Example, we woke up early and planned on getting out offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, but strong winds made for a quick change of plans. So we're cruising the intercoastal waterway and I'm scrambling to figure out plan B. Even on the inside, overnight winds have stirred up the water and it doesn't look good. My main fishing buddy today is Mike Scarlett, whose first love is Florida flats fishing, and Amanda Lynn Mayhew, who's fishing Florida for her first time. So much for impressing them both with hot offshore action. Mike isn't a fish numbers or size guy. He just loves to get on the water and enjoy some peace and quiet. And I can relate to that. Amanda's full of anticipation and ready to catch anything. You know the fishing's gonna be tough when the only guys you see on the water are commercial crab fishermen, no anglers. This day, strong offshore winds have sucked the water out of the flats, creating an extremely low tide which is another challenge. Normally we have two to three feet of water, but it's down to about a foot, and we can see oyster bars and crab traps sticking out of the water. So I keep my outboard trimmed up, and I putt-putt slowly and follow any troughs or slightly deeper water along the flat. Since we're moving slowly, just trying to get to the first spot, we put a couple lines out and troll with a spoon about 50 feet back. Even in the shallow water, sometimes you get lucky and you get some predator fish that are following the shallow breaks and looking for bait fish. It's evident strong winds have turned the fish off. We try casting with poor results. We move again and try another spot. Ever been in that situation where things aren't going so good or your way and you start doubting and losing confidence? Thoughts like, do we move again? Do we change lures, try different presentations? You know what? The bottom line is, if the fish aren't there, you can't catch them no matter what you do. So we troll again, try casting, try bait fishing, no results. Sometimes you just have to make a big run and try a completely different area. Sometimes it helps to chum and cut bait and see if you can draw fish, or whatever fish are nearby, close to the boat. So I cut up small fish like finger mullet and pinfish and give it a go. Now, you gotta find something that's gonna tap. That's a good sign. Don't reel in too much line. Leave at least the length of line as the rod length, Amanda, so you can swing it in. I'm gonna use them to chum. Oh! Hey, Mike. What do you got? I got a nibble. I don't know. You still on? I'm going to put it in neutral, I think so. Still I, on? Uh, I'm guessing he is. I'd say that's a little more than a nibble. I love to hear that screeching reel. Mm -hmm. Let me get my line in. Oh, we got oh. a friend, the cormorant. You know why we love fishing in Florida, Mike and I? Mike, Appreciate what are the top 10 reasons to fish in Florida? Lots of different types of fish. That's number 10. What's number nine? Lots of fish. <laughs> Come on, eight, the weather? The weather's beautiful, the company's great. I'll go to number one. Okay. It's the company and the, the experience. Company. Come That's on, great. even if we don't get fish, which never happens, we have a blast. Oh, there's a great sport fish. Yeah. 
It's like eating a steelhead. So I was going to tell you, my friend what? Benjamin Rubini makes these reels. Mm -hmm. It's called a burr reel, like bear, like yeah. a bear. And right now I've got it on free spool, so you can spin around, mm -hmm. so it's quiet. If I pull the lever back, I've got it in my drag mode, oh. so there's the drag, yeah. Let's get that exciting sound. So it's great for trolling, great for bottom fishing. I, I don't like handling fish. Do you mind grabbing this fish for me? Thanks. I'd be happy to. Thanks, man. But You're awesome, man. They Look tend, it. They tend to make a mess of your boat. You be careful, okay? You, you need the net or you okay? You bring it over here. They don't make a mess of their oh, of the boat. Oh, they do. They have a habit Look of... Look at you, death grip. They have a habit here. of... Of habit of what? Pooping. Oh, in your okay, boat. you're right. You end up with oh, a lot. Oh, look, there's what you're oh, talking there about right it's, there. It's, it's, it's dripping. A good yeah, yeah, yeah. They are good to eat. I like the way Luck makes oh, you, those fish you patties. Have, you have caught them. Perfect. It's good mid size. They get a little bigger than that. Yeah. Quite often they're about four inches smaller, but yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. nice fighting fish. Yeah, I thought I had a blue the way it came out of the water. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Okay, let him swim around a little bit just to get, you know, get his thoughts straight. There you go. Okay, so we're going to keep going. You know, the nice thing when we're fishing out here, right now we're fishing a, a big open flat. Um, it's only, we're in about three, three and a half feet of water. And you can see a lot of keys and there's all kinds of back stuff. So the reason we're trolling is, I don't really want to get it on plane, because we've got to get about 400 yards before I can really put the motor down and take off. A couple reasons. One, I don't really like going through the sand and the grass with my motor, but most important, I don't like tearing up the bottom. So a lot of times when we fish on the flats, you'll see where guys have been running and it looks like roadways. And that grass is really important because there's so much life and food in there for the fish to eat. Right, Mike? Yes, and it takes an awful long time for that grass to replenish. I agree. 100%. Once you put, you see a scar, it'll be there for years. Yep, okay. Get your line out. Back to work. We traveled about 30 minutes, and now we're on a big flat. How big? How about three miles long? Yep. First thought, are the fish gonna be here? That's Second thought, where? We cast artificials and we finally find some feeding spotted sea trout. Let's see what he's got. So you gotta admit, these are like the most reliable there he fish. Is. Oh, another good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna grab the net. Grab Keep him in the water. Oh, I just had a hit. Yeah, we were into school. Oh, might, man. Might wanna put your anchor down. There's a school of them here. Are you sure? Yep. Okay, here we go. Anchors away. Yeah, this is a, this is another 15, 16 incher. All right. There we go. You know what? You're right. Eater, another, eater, another keeper. See You're if it's throat throat see for if dinner. Comes off. Look at that. Look at that. What a Look release. Look at that. Here, I'm going to take years of experience in Charlotte Harbor to do hook. that. We're going to measure just to make sure. Look at nice eating sized trout. Fishing with friends. Uh, let's see. He is 14, Mike. Just under, eh? Yep. For him, it's Sunday. All right, I'm going to take off. You beautiful trout. You. Here it goes. You know, I always give you the best spot. And you had, and you had one, too. Yeah, it was probably, you know, one starts feeding, another one gets excited. So we'll uh, just work this make a few casts, yeah, half a dozen casts. You know, when we're fishing like this, it's kind of nice to have the power poles because we're using the wind and we're drifting down. You can see we're out several hundred yards from shore. This is one of Mike's favorite spots to fish. I'm gonna call you Captain Mike today. I mm -hmm. have limited out here the last three times I've been here. I like that. So we're just fishing, this is a big flat. Sea trout are notorious for feeding on grass flats. They love bait fish, they love shrimp, crabs, literally anything that they can get. So we're just using these little minnow imitating lures, twitching them and covering a lot of territory. So in a minute I'm gonna be pulling up the power poles. The days are gone where you gotta throw a rope in and an anchor, <laughs> at least, at least in short. Do you remember when you used to do that? Oh, I remember those, I had a sore back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or no electric, right? right? When you're trying to control the boat. That's right. There's a bit of a crapshoot there. Yeah. Spotted sea trout are weak fish. They look pretty, hit aggressively, are great eating, and love to feed on vast grass flats for their favorite food, which is shrimp and bait fish. When you find schooling feeding sea trout, the action is usually hot, but only problem is they hang around in age classes, and sometimes they're smaller, and that's our case. At least we got some action. Now all we have to do is go through the smaller fish and get some bigger keeper trout. Mike, you are amazing. It's like being on the parallel he bars. There he is. Look at you. There he's coming in. He's a nice size. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We've let a few go. Yeah. No, this is... We're this, gonna... That's definitely bigger than the ones we had this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. We're gonna have a nice trout dinner. Yeah. Okay. You know what? No, that's about the size we've been catching. Pliers are right here. Okay. Here. You hold that, you're doing good. All right. 
Hold them firmly. Look at Am I doing good? You're doing well. Net the fish for you. Take the hook for an for Ontario you. fisherman. You're doing well down now, here you, in Florida. You think, you think he's no. 15? I think he's under. I, th I think he's 15. Okay. You know what? I'm going to take the cooler you measurement. You take the cooler measurement. You got it. Okay, Mike. Let's see. Let's see. If What's you, the oh verdict? Oh my goodness. Do I oh know the goodness. size of my fish? You know what? 15 this, inches. Uh, we can crack the ice. So it's always nice to have a cooler. Depending on the size of the fish, you either have a big cooler or a small cooler. So Is it going to bother you if I catch another one? <laughs> I don't hear what you're saying. Does it bother you if I catch another one? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, you carry on. <laughs> carry on. I'll show you how to do it. Usually the juvenile sea trout under 15 inches make up a lot of your catch, especially here in Florida. But if you're patient and work in the area, sooner or later, you'll hook some of the big ones over 15 inches. And we've caught them right up to 24, 25 inches. Okay, so what inches. happened to you, Mike? How did you go? Oh, that's, a, that's the biggest one so far. How did, you go, coming in. how did you go from not coming fishing in. much to crazy? Because I met you, my friend. No, but, no, but I'm serious. But then there was a time that we didn't really fish together because I was busy, I got remarried. No, and wasn't. then I get a call saying, I got a boat, I got a house in Florida. I need you to show me the spots, I remember that. Because I retired and I need you to relax and the fishing fit in to that nicely. So that's wow. why I became a fisherman. Look at this is the biggest one. Now that's a nice gold. I like it, that's yeah, getting it's better. golden. Yeah. Okay, see if you can scoop it out. Now I can oh good, it. now I can grab, you can grab it? Now okay, I'm... look at you, manhandle it. There we go, you squeeze them hard. They are slippery, yeah, yeah. eh? You can cast bait fish imitating lures to catch these aggressive fish or work a popping cork with live bait. Lures cover more water and often will run a couple of baited lines while we're casting because a lot of times you'll get those fish come real close to the boat. Mike, is this oh. classic? Look, look. Oh, this. I've been there many <laughs> I've got times. A, I've got a knot. Oh, you know what? It might be a blue. Uh, no, I think it's a little trout. What the heck have you got? It's, it's, a, a, trout. it's a trout. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a trout. It's a nice keeper too. Uh, Hey, hold on. Just keep it just, there, Mike. He might be a little undersized. Ready? Here he comes. Hold on. Good okay, one, Mike. Go. Nice okay. hookup. But yeah, take a measurement on. Take it up to the cooler. No, I think so he's you know. a little undersized. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's a good sign. Maybe we. Now, can... is this the one that you've modified? So there's yes. one less hook. I give, I'm, here, I'm, let's, uh, I'm a true sportsman. Let's show the viewers here. Five hooks. Do you find that you get better action instead of six? Well, you get better action when you take one of those hooks off, or no? My, I, I get better reaction when I lose the fish. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, this one's got more weight easy, to it. Easy. Oh yeah, we good got it. one. This is a good one. Look at the wake there. I don't know. Is that your? That's not your fish, is it? I can yeah, see a big wake it. there. This has got some weight. Okay, let me get the net again. Mike, just take your time, okay? You don't think this... Uh, it's okay if you get excited. This mirror lure is a good lure? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if it catches any fish. Well, now, is, you know what the funny thing is, Mike? Oh, let's see, he's moving around. Mike, it used to be... I'm concentrating. It used to be that your... Oh, another nice trout. That your wife liked to fish, yeah. and you just came along, and you kept company, right? Yes. Remember? Yes. <laughs> you, you were really into fishing. So now did now you, look at me. What pill did you take? The Italo pill. You hooked me. Because you've got your hooked own. Fishing. You've got your beautiful skiff, 21 foot Key West. Yeah. You nice. got how many horses on there? 200? 225? 200, 200, Let me get the pliers so you don't get hurt. There you go. And uh, yeah, it's I like funny. I like dropping them down on the bottom. It's funny. Yeah, I'll go like that. Mike will invite us over for dinner at his house because he lives about a half an hour away. And uh, he'll say, be there at 5. So we're there at 5. And the funny thing You're is... You're there at 5. I've never seen no one you to be on time ever. We're there at 5, and he's not there. His boat is out. He's fishing. Right. And I want to show them if, we, if this we guy's got the little the fangs. Front. Yeah. See those little fangs in the roof of the mouth? So you never want to put your fingers in there. But I tell you what, those teeth probably really grab those bait fish or shrimp that they're getting well. Guess why they call them a spotted sea trout. Do you yeah. see any spots? Lots of gorgeous spots. If you get a bigger one, they get much golder. Gators. And, and really you do nice. get some gators, right? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm going to just lean over here, Mike. See, see while you're working with your irregularity there, yes. I'm just going to... In salt water, you know, a lot of times we don't revive the fish. We actually throw them so that they hit the water, and that actually wakes them up, especially when you get them out of deep water when you're out fishing in the Gulf. So look what we've got here. This is the lure that Mike's doing really well on. It's, just, it's called a mirror lure. That particular one is chartreuse. We've got a popping cork, so this thing rattles, makes all kinds of noise when you cast it out. And we've got shrimp, some beautiful shrimp I'm gonna show you here. 
that if we don't use them, we're probably going to eat them because these are real jumbos. Do you mind if I catch another one? You go ahead All right. while I talk to them. Look, these are the shrimp that we're talking about right here. And anything, anything on the shallows, redfish, the sea trout, snook, love these. And these are good size. When you get into uh, shrimp that's this size, see the action on the tail? Nice slapping round. They're perfect. Just kidding, come on. Okay, I'm gonna go back to fishing. Come on, Mike, get another one. We keep working the flat, moving around with the electric, pinning the boat when we hook double headers, and before we know it, we're on a productive spot. Mike looks like he's in the zone, getting some larger trout. I love to see how focused he is. He's not bothered by the changes in plans and enjoying the whole experience. Yeah, he's about half inch too short. Release. Nice size. But they're out there. Yep. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Well, as far as weather went today, we were served lemons, and instead of sulking, we made lemonade and made the most of it and had fun catching a bunch of sea trout. Now it's time to just relax and enjoy a fresh fish dinner. On the Farlow's menu this afternoon is none other than the hogfish. I really appreciate John Massa's attention to detail. Farlow's fish are delivered fresh and kept in the main cooler until prepped for cooking. What really impresses me is that John changes his surgical gloves about every five minutes to ensure the highest level of hygiene whenever he's handling raw fish. Hogfish have a small stomach cavity and a small rib cage, which makes them ideal to prepare whole. In this case, the fish is already scaled and gutted. John leaves the fish whole and just scores both sides of the fish about three to five times, depending on the size of the fish. This enables for faster and more even cooking. The hogfish is coated in flour, then dipped in a light tempura batter. This hogfish weighs between one and a quarter and one and a half pounds. It's gently lowered into the fresh oil that is preheated to 350 Fahrenheit and fried for about 12 minutes. The fish's core temperature is checked, and if needed, it's returned back to the hot oil and fried until it reaches an internal temperature of 150 Fahrenheit. Once the fish is properly fried, it's delicately placed on a platter and accompanied by a herb aioli and mango remoulade. Olive oil mixed with fresh herbs and lemon wedges finish the plate. That sounds like a plan. Okay, so listen. Yes. We've uh, known each other for 20 some years. We have. It's been a great relationship. You've been a gentleman inviting us to your home. We've celebrated Christmas, Thanksgiving at your daughter and son-in-law. One of the things I enjoy the most with you is not so much being out on the water, even though we have a blast. Yes. You don't talk so much because you get so involved in fishing. It's the time afterwards. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for a great day. This is, a, by the way, a classic Florida drink. What are you drinking? Hops, water. It's very healthy. Oh. It's mostly water. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to getting healthier here. No, but you know, we've known each other for so long. What gets me is that you were really a golfer. You still are a very good golfer, seven I, handicap. I, I do golf a lot. Club champion, you know, that kind of stuff. All that stuff. And I know that you went fishing with me more because of Debbie, because she liked fishing. Yes. And then, uh, I don't know, you took some kind of a pill or something. And no, you fishing, called me. Fishing became very relaxing for me. I, I find going out on the boat with my dog or with you, you sort of similar to my Thank dog. Thank you. <laughs> I bark a lot. That. No, um, it's very relaxing. I, 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 I mean, I, I is can't it be about, a better day. So, is it about catching? Not necessarily. What, if what? I go out, if I go out on the water and I'm just traveling through the mangroves like this and looking at the wildlife, that's enough for me. Great food. Thanks for coming, by the way. Wow, that is. You can beautiful. see the detail on it. Yeah. That's awesome. Very nice. It smells delicious. Salad. Salads. Perfect. Wow. That's amazing. That's so Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. That is amazing. Well, why don't you uh, cut some out for us? Sure. Here, let me cut a piece. 
And I'm gonna just lay it down because they've got this beautiful presentation. You can see where it was scoured. See the cuts right yeah. here? I'm gonna give you some of the best part, which is right here at the caudal peduncle. The which? Caudal peduncle. <laughs> it's where the body meets the tail. Okay, I'm just I gonna learned, give you a little bit. I learned something Listen, new every day. It, I'm gonna put it over here, okay? okay. Try it with the sauce. I wanna see your reaction. What do you think it tastes like? Well, I'll try a little. Because I know John prepared this, the chef, and he, he did a fantastic job. I can see, look at the flesh is so tender and white. That's fantastic. So you'll see the way this is before we start talking fishing. Oh, that's good. It's not delicious. That's very good. You said you like white fish. White look, look at look at the color mm -hmm. of the fish. It's white. No, I have no problem with that. Very good. Very good. tasty. Now, where we got most of our fish off the west wall. Well, that's good. Isn't that delicious? Oh. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah. You worked hard today. <laughs> well, you caught most of the trout. I did catch a few. I was trying to teach you something. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean... Well, they're, to me, the trout are like almost like walleye. They move in and out of a spot. They're like a pack of wolves. You're starting so, to interrupt my... You go meal. ahead. Yeah, you can eat. Good. I'm Italian, so we eat and talk. There's no rules. Just right. enjoy the meal. But I'm just saying, those trout are like wolves, pack of wolves. Mm -hmm. They move in. There's food there. They consume it. Yep. If it starts to scatter, they move ahead, you know, and find some more. So you were on them a few days, and you were yep. getting your limits, right? We were, and we were getting good sized ones, up to uh, 19 inch. We didn't get any uh, any gators. Yep. Now, gator trout is anything considered 20 inches or longer. They have to be 15 to keep. Then we were catching a lot that were 17, 18, 19 inches. Yeah. Those are nice fish. Yeah. So today we caught several keepers. Unfortunately, we didn't get a gator. But That's okay. Hey, fun to be out in the water and. and look, uh, now we're relaxing, talking about old times, enjoying this delicious fish. This is outrageous. Cool. You know what? What are we going to do next? Are we going to go for kings? Or do you want to go for amberjack? I think amberjack might be fun. Okay. One day I wandered out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it. But it drew me to it Soon I was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Lubignan. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center fins, hooked on MFS, quality fishing tackle, Seabreeze Boats, Tame the Oceans, and Farlow's Caribbean Cuisine with a Southern Twist.